Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout. I'm Larry Lawson, your host and guide on our continuing journey into the unknown to determine what really does exist on the other side of reality as we know it. And tonight to uh, join us on this quest is Mr. Michael Fox of the Fox Family Paranormal Society out of Georgia. Michael's got about 30, over 30 years, actually, of paranormal research and investigative experience. And in 2013, along with his wife, Destiny, created the Fox Family Paranormal Society. Uh, the goal of the FFPS is to help those having paranormal activity in their homes or businesses either learn to live with the spirits or somehow help them find the light and go to the other side. Michael Fox, welcome to Paranormal Stakeout, my friend. Glad to be here with you tonight. Fox Family Paranormal Society. This kind of hits home for me for a couple reasons that I'll, I'll, I'll touch on. It's a family, is it? I mean, is it blood family, or is it just what you what you call it? Oh, it's, it's quite a bit blood family. Uh, it uh, consisted of myself, my wife, my daughter, and uh, we have a niece that uh, we're training to be an investigator. Uh huh. And uh, we have some team members that aren't uh, blood related, but they're part of the family. They're they're like family. We call them brothers and sisters. I can I can totally understand that. How um, thirty years? That's a long time. That's even before it became vogue to uh, to be involved in paranormal investigations. What got you into the field? Uh, actually, what got me into the field was I had my own paranormal experience as a uh, young teenager. Uh, my parents had moved to the Midwest, and they had bought a uh, old Midwestern house, two-story house, and uh, I started having uh, some experiences upstairs in the bedroom that I had. Uh, it got to the point, you know, the bed would vibrate and, and slide across mm. the room. And how old were you at the time you said, 13? Uh, probably uh, closer to 15. Okay. Uh, nothing happened prior to that? No, I've never had any experience prior to that. Okay. But uh, my family's always been interested in, in the unknown and paranormal. I actually, as a small child, growing up in North Carolina, my parents would uh, take me out. We would go out and uh, check out cemeteries all the time. Oh, your parents would. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, that's, and that's pretty interesting. So it's age 15, you have this experience. Where did you go to from there? What, what, what road did you travel, so to speak? Well, at that age, I really didn't understand what was happening. So I, I kind of moved out of that room and spent my last few years sleeping on the couch downstairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and but uh, when did you start actually trying to find out what this whole thing was? Uh, after I got a little bit older, uh, when I got in uh, about in my early 20s, like 20, 21 years old, um, I was uh, in the military out of school, and uh, somebody mm-hmm. talked to me about paranormal investigating. And I said, well, you know, that sounds interesting. Maybe I could get some answers what happened to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's, what, where did you go from there? Uh, start a team? Join a team? Uh, well, actually, what I started – from that point is I started reading a lot of books on it, checking out a lot of the history behind it. And I, I started realizing there was a lot of uh, famous people that was, you know, over many years that was into the paranormal or believed in the paranormal. And, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, that caught my interest too. And uh, when I got out of the military, I actually joined a team and uh, worked my way up to uh, uh, a director of a team from that point. Oh, okay. And that, that, where in the Midwest was this? Uh, in Missouri. Oh, okay. Okay. So you you get out of the military. Thank you for your service, by the way. Um, you. And you be, you begin to investigate. You know, like a lot of us that got into this, there was no there was no training, formal training in any of this. Most of it was self taught. Uh, but you got most of your experience through reading, through practical ex- experience. Um, mm-hmm. You were in, in uh, Missouri for a while. Then where did you head to from there? Uh, well, uh, I actually, uh, well, I was working with the team in Missouri for a few years. And then uh, my, uh, I had a, a niece that lived out in California. Her and her husband uh, actually was running a paranormal team. So, you know, it's kind of been in the family for a long time. And I just didn't gotcha. realize it. Uh-huh. And uh, they asked me if I would open up a chapter of their group in the Midwest. So I actually, I started running their chapter for about four or five years. And then I moved to, uh, Alabama, Montgomery, because, uh, somebody there is running a a paranormal team asked me if I'd come down, be their director and help teach his people a little more of the scientific side of running, you know, the equipment, taking Mm -hmm. EVPs and that kind of thing. And, okay. And then, uh, from, Alabama, I moved to Georgia, and then uh, eventually my wife and I decided to start our own team. Oh, okay. Very, very cool. Um, yeah. Did you have a mentor? Did you have a mentor at all? Anybody that you kind of uh, uh, emulated their their philosophies or tactics or anything like that? Um, not really. I just kind of took a little bit from everybody I met in the paranormal, you know, in the early years, and I tried to utilize what other uh, investigators were doing across the country and incorporating it into my style mm-hmm. and eventually just kind of develop my own style of investigating. Okay. All right. And, and like I said, that's, and that's what, the way a lot of us started. There was really nothing formal. And uh, I'm really, I'm really hoping that that can change, that we can start be coming more formalized in some of our training and uh, education. That way folks following behind us will have maybe a little bit more solid, more solid foundation than we did. That's my thoughts anyway. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That would be, uh, you know, an ideal uh, scenario if we could do that where people could actually learn mm-hmm. from, you know, things we've done in the past. Exactly. Now, now we're, we're, we're all the way up into Georgia. Now, where about is Temple, Georgia? You're, you're in Temple, correct? Yeah, I'm in Temple, Georgia, which we're – uh, what about forty miles west of Atlanta? Okay, and uh, you begin Fox Family Paranormal. You mentioned that your son and your daughter joined you in on the team, correct? Uh, my daughter and my niece is okay. uh, on the team here. Okay, and my wife, and uh, I've had well, how- uh, some some of my uh, first cousins have joined us a few times, but. Right now, it's just mainly my wife and my daughter and my niece and myself and a few team members that we brought on to help out. Okay. Uh, your daughter, how old was she when you began to allow her to investigate? 
Well, she actually did not get into it until she was probably 29 or 30. Oh, okay. So not as a child. She, no. Okay. That's a, that was one question I wanted to ask you because in my team, I have brought both of uh, my boys in it, and we, uh, we brought them in. I brought them in probably around 13, and their mother was not all that happy with me about that. And uh, yeah. it's it, it was kind of a dicey situation. Is this something that, you know, you want to really introduce to somebody that age? Uh, and if you do, how do you do it in such a way that it um, uh, doesn't skew their thinking, so to speak? Yeah. Uh, any any thoughts on that on your end? Actually, we've been uh, uh, doing a little bit of that. We started what we call a junior team for Fox mm-hmm. Family, and a friend of ours wanted us to take on her, her son. And uh, we've been using him, but we don't take him on a lot of investigations. We kind of pick and choose what we'll take him on because some things uh, that we get in, I feel like it's a little more in or too in depth for him. Sure, sure. And and that's and I've I've taken a couple hits from that. I'll be honest with you. When my boys are in here, of course now they're they're uh, in uh, one's nineteen, one's twenty one, so they're they're much older now. But um, yeah. it, it's a, it's it can be a touchy thing to uh, to bring somebody in that young a because they're they're not they haven't really matured yet, and b you know how is this really going to affect them? Fortunately, I I don't see too many side effects beyond the norms for somebody that age with both the boys. But uh, I just wasn't sure uh, how old your family members were when they brought when you brought them in. But you do have younger ones. Do you? Um, does anybody yeah, question? Yeah, we have a junior it? team that uh, we've been uh, running for a, about a, uh, two years now, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we use young young people. I mean, we're you know we're talking thirteen, fourteen, fifteen year old uh, kids that right. are interested in the paranormal, and uh, we work with them. We bring them over here. We talk to them about the equipment. We have taken them on uh, smaller investigations. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the places we go to have age requirements, especially, you know, formal oh. uh, places like uh, we did Sloth's Furnace here a couple of years ago in uh, Alabama, and they had a 18 and older regulation for us to bring anybody in. Right, right, right. Um, any yeah. have, it, With your younger team members, have you experienced any particular issues with them uh, working with your team or is this affecting them at all? No, they would actually they work really well with the team when we when we bring the young young ones in and uh, they're really learning. Uh, they're really real open minded to what we're telling them and trying to help them with. And they're learning how to do proper EVP sessions and time their questions and give you know okay. plenty of time for a response. Okay, good. That's that training that I'm talking about, helping helping folks uh, grow from the bottom up. And that's kind of our yeah. take also with the younger folks, not to influence them to believe any particular way, but rather how to how to do this in a responsible and ethical way. The uh, philosophy of our, of our group, for example, is that you know we're looking for answers and wherever the evidence takes us is where we're going to head because nobody really right. knows what does exist on the on the other side. So um, when we get back in just a couple of minutes after this next break, Michael, I'd love to talk to you more about your team and what you guys do, the equipment you use. Uh, So uh, everybody stay with us. I want to remind you this is Michael Fox of Fox Family Paranormal Society. You can find them on Facebook at Fox Family Paranormal FFPS. So stay with us, folks. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes on Paranormal Stakeout. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by Shaman Worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, 
international long-distance Shamana healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. And we are back on Paranormal Stakeout with my guest tonight, Michael Fox of Fox Family Paranormal Society out of Temple, Georgia. Michael, interesting conversation on getting young people involved in the, uh, in the field. And, you know, I really think that done responsibly, that could be a big part of our future. So um, I'm glad to hear you, you uh, have that junior team. We actually have a few of ourselves. We have uh, three youngsters on our, uh, our team that we're using kind of in the same way you are. But I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your team's philosophy. What's the goal of FFPS? Well, of course, our, our main goal is to gather information for ourselves, too, you know, on finding uh, uh, information on the paranormal or what's on the other side and why it's happening. And, uh, mm-hmm. if you know, when you cross over, are you in control or is something else in control of them? Mm-hmm. And then uh, also uh, our, our other number one goal is to help our clients when we do private investigations deal with whatever they're going through and help them uh, either understand it or, you know, help them, you know, cleanse their home and uh, where they can have a normal life again. Yeah. And that's, that's a tough part Two two uh, distinct, but important philosophies there. Uh, what do you think a ghost is, Michael? What, sh- what is your opinion of what this entity is? Well, I, I, I think, you know, I kind of agree with, uh, Albert Einstein did a thesis years ago. He talked about, you know, when the, this carbon body uh, disintegrated and no longer existed, uh, we were made up of energy, and energy just always continues. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, a ghost is the energy of somebody that used to walk the earth as a, a human being, and now it's it's evolved into another state. Okay, and this other state. So essentially it's our... Our, the our, the essence of us is, is residual energy. Yes. If I got that right, okay. Um, uh, do you, what do you think? Where do you think it is that they're existing? Are they existing in the same plane we are, just in a different form? Are they in a different plane? What What are your thoughts there? Uh, after uh, the years I've been doing it, I've come to believe that uh, they they exist in a different plane, but they have the ability some point to cross over into our reality Mm -hmm. but i think they go back and forth okay difference between a residual and an intelligent haunt and for those that are listening that may not be familiar with those terms a residual haunt is almost as if something is being replayed as if it's on a recording an intelligent haunt is something that actually responds back to those that are uh trying to make contact right how do you how do you take that philosophy and um connect it with those two theories of uh uh intelligent or residuals uh i think when you're dealing with a residual haunting uh so to speak i think what you're seeing is energy uh, that has been imprinted in the structure or, or the area that it's being haunted and it's being recorded back like a movie Mm-hmm. And uh, it just keeps replaying itself because a lot of times, you know, 
people will uh, describe seeing uh, an entity walking through the house, but it obviously, you know, doesn't react to them standing there. Correct. But when you're dealing with an intelligent haunting, it's they they are as aware of you as you are of them. So so yeah, and I guess what I'm getting at is how how they're both energy, but how are they um, how are they different? I mean, the the intelligent one is what you described before. Uh, uh-huh. Where you know they're just existing in another plane, but is that other residual one just just energy that's trapped somewhere? Do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, I think it's an energy that's trapped or it's looping in time. Mm-hmm. It's 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 something dramatic had happened to a point that it imprinted itself in in the the, the time frame, and it just keeps replaying itself. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Do you have? A, um, I noticed that Destiny is an empath, I believe. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any other members of your team that are gifted like that? Uh, we did have a right now. Uh, we had another uh, lady that was working with us that was pretty gifted, but she's decided uh, to take uh, some time off. So right now, Destiny's the only one on the team that's uh, empathic. Well, empathic meaning feeling the pain or the uh, the internal strife of another. Uh, right. Th- there are many folks out there that, that use mediums. And I'll be honest with you, my background is in law enforcement. And uh-huh. uh, I used, uh, I, in many times working homicide cases, for example, had been contacted by mediums that really didn't give accurate information. And right. back in those days, quite frankly, I pretty much... Uh, blew off their ability. And in, over the years, I've become a little bit more, I'll, I'll say, evolved, and I've seen some things that help me understand a little bit that perhaps there, there are those that have that gift. But what is your feeling on why they all mediums can't get, give the same story? Well, I, I think, you know, you have people that think they're uh, gifted, and you have people that was gifted, you know, by God themselves that were mm-hmm. born with these abilities. And uh, it's when I, when I talk to somebody that's wanting to work with us that says they're, they're psychic or an empath or a psychic medium, uh, I'll ask a series of questions to them, you know, trying to get a feel for, you know, if they really, really are, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, how often do you come across one that is perhaps being um... – Let's say less than truthful, less than ethical. Do you ever come across that? Yeah, well, more times than not, uh, we do. When we really? are contacted by people like that, uh, you know, they portray themselves as having, you know, certain abilities. And then when we talk to them a few times, and you know, if if we do use them, we kind of watch and uh, pay attention to what they're doing. And uh, mm-hmm. we had a, a psychic one time, you know, said. Uh, we were doing an investigation, and uh, Destiny decided to take her with us, and uh, she got surprised by something. And Destiny said, well, if you were psychic, you should have already known that was going to happen. Ah, okay, that, that, that's, that's interesting. That goes right along the line. If you're psychic, why can't you give me the uh, lottery numbers, for example? Right, right. But, but they can't. So how, no. do, how do we rectify that? How do, I mean, we, you've used mediums on your team. I've seen uh-huh. them in action, but I think that's one of the biggest problems we have in our field right now is the consistency. And what I'm trying to find out, what I'm trying to inquire uh, from, from many different sources, why, if you've got two or three that are sincere, they, they truly mm-hmm. are or believe that they are gifted, why aren't they giving the same story? Uh, and that's that's where I'm coming from. Now, that's different from somebody that's trying to con you. And it's even a little bit of different from somebody that maybe believes they're gifted and, and they're really not. I think but it goes get, back. I, I don't know if you've uh, ever experienced this in your, your years of doing this or not. But, have you know, I've been on investigations where we've used several digital recorders. And one digital mm-hmm. recorder would get, you know, <laughs> unbelievable EVPs. And the, the other one, it was 10 feet away, had nothing. Right, like the spirits were able to focus on whatever they wanted. You know, they focused on that one, that one recorder, not the other one. Okay, why? Why, in your opinion, did that happen? Uh, Well, I think 
they, they pick and choose. I think uh, they felt more comfortable with one piece of equipment versus the other piece. Mm -hmm. See, I have a different thought on that. My, my thoughts are it, it all comes down to frequency and vibration. Uh, with equipment, uh -huh. I, we, we had something like that happen where we, uh, in the, the town that we do a lot of work in, a place called Felsmere, Florida, we actually uh -huh. had two recorders right next to each other. One of them was held by my eldest son. And a question was asked, and on, and on both recorders, you could clearly hear him ask the question, is anybody here with us? On the one that was in my son's hand, you heard a male voice say, but of course. On the one that oh. was sitting right next to it, you got nothing. You could hear right. the question asked, but you couldn't hear the answer. Uh, and once again, this is all theoretical, and I think a lot of folks need to understand every all of this is theoretical because nothing's been proven yet. Um, but I believe it does have to be do with frequency and vibration. Uh, I also feel with the psychics, it also has to do with the, frankly, the tuning of, of our own brains. Sometimes mm -hmm. our own life experiences, our own education, our own backgrounds can skew how information comes out. Uh, and also there's plenty of times where folks really just aren't what they either s say they are or believe they are. But j just wanted to get your thoughts on that one there. All right. Uh, we're getting into a, a, the second half of your question now. We're running a little bit short here, so I may have to cut you off in a minute or so. Um, All right. You say that you help folks in their homes and their businesses either learn to deal with the, with the activity or rid themselves of it. Um, tell me how you do that. Well, uh, if uh, we will try to do a house cleansing if the client wants us to. Uh, Destiny will go in with sage, and uh, she'll, she'll anoint with oils and mm -hmm. use sea salt and try to, you know, ask whatever's there to either cross over or, you know, leave. Okay. But uh, a lot of times uh, what we end up having to do is counsel the clients, you know, well, you need to take charge of your home. This is your home, not theirs. Okay. If they're going to be here, you need to tell them they're only allowed to be in a certain area and they're not allowed to touch anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, once you've done this, uh -huh. have you ever been unsuccessful doing it? Uh, yeah, we've had a few cases that we've had to go back and rework. But uh, for the most part, uh, most of our clients, is, you know, contact us back, you know, months later and saying, you know, everything is great. You know, they're they're sleeping through the night, uh, you know, thanking us for, you know, taking the time to help them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we're getting ready to take our next break here, so I'm, I'm going to put that thought on hold for a second because I, I got a follow-up question on that. Folks, stay with us. I'm with Michael Fox of Fox Family Paranormal Society. You can find them on Facebook at Fox Family Paranormal FFPS. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I.net. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, 
after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. And we are back for the next round of tonight's episode with Fox Family Paranormal Society director Michael Fox. Uh, Michael is uh, c- carrying on from where we were last uh, um, last session here. We're talking about things that you can do for folks in their homes. Um, and you, you were talking about either uh, helping them cross over or, or um, helping them to live with it. And you, you've, you've, you've never not been unsuccessful having a, 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 um, an entity crossover. Did I get that right? Uh, for the most part. We've had a few cases over the years that we've had to go back and keep reworking. Uh, that it seems like the entities don't want to leave and they don't want to be, you know, cooperative. Mm-hmm. But well, uh, we just keep doing it again and again and again. Do you ever worry that you know you're gonna you can tell somebody you know we're, we'll take care of it we can we can help them cross over, but then it doesn't happen. Well, Do you ever get concerned about perhaps, or somebody say, yeah, it's fine, and then five weeks later they call you back and say, they're back, I thought you got rid of them. How do you how do you deal with that? Well, I never tell a client 100% that we can you know, do that. I mm-hmm. tell them we can attempt to do that. I said a lot of times it's up to the, the entities whether or not they want to go. Okay. Um, so do... we can ask them to go. Okay. As far as how you do that, uh, you say uh, Destiny normally is the one that le- leads that uh, part of the investigation? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, and she's an empath. How does, how, how does that differ from being a medium that can actually make direct contact with the other side? Well, being an empath, she, she actually could feel of sometimes when uh, we have a lot of uh, – spirit activity in a location she she sometimes can she feeds off the even the entity's emotions uh-huh okay okay um have you ever had somebody say you told me you could help and, and you didn't has that ever happened uh no not really okay because that that's probably my biggest my my biggest worry and i'll be quite honest with you my group does not do that if we run into something that we think uh might be like that. We have other other folks that we will contact, but I I get very very concerned about um, doing things that making promises we can't keep. Um, right. And and we can't do that. And and there's nobody on our team that can do that. So um, I, I get very very concerned because I think that really harms the reputation of those all of us in the field with these charlatans that get out there and say. You know, we can do this for you, and we're we're here to help, and we're going to solve your problems. And you, they really don't. And sometimes it's yep. just folks that mean well, and they just really don't know what they're doing. Or sometimes it's charlatans that are lying. Yeah, well, that's why we never make that promise. We we always okay. straight up with the client when I'm talking to them. I tell them, you know, that we can attempt it, but we can't guarantee anything. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um, did 
did Destiny has Destiny received any additional training on how to pass over, or is this something she's pretty well self taught with? Uh, Destiny is uh, also an ordained minister. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, so it, she she has been doing this even before we were married. She was an ordained minister. She was involved in uh, churches in Georgia mm-hmm. and stuff, and she has been dealing with uh, uh, people with possessions and stuff for many years, even before I met her. Oh, what denomination, if I may ask? Well, she was a uh, Pentecostal. Uh, it's okay. actually a non-denominational, but... Uh, Okay, so so she's been de- has she ever had to do an exorcism? Yes, she has. Yeah, that's uh, that's some pretty heavy duty stuff. Um, yeah. Have has she been called in to do that while you guys have been together and working together? <clears throat> well, we've had a few calls. Uh, you know that people think they have some type of demonic presence in their home, mm-hmm. which I will go in. Uh, my side of it is more scientific. I go in and I try to prove or disprove a haunting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I base everything that I say on the evidence that I, I gather. Okay. Uh, what sort of, when you say scientific, can you explain that to me? What, what techniques do you use? What equipment do you use? Well, uh, I use the scanner. I have a, a millimeter. I use to measure EMF waves, you know, uh, mm-hmm. milligills, you know, and see see, you know, how much energy is being put out in the area. We use oh, you mean tubes. milligrams? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh-huh. uh, we use, uh, uh, you know, various types of equipment. Uh, I'm, I'm really big on ITC research. So, I, you know, we use a lot of ITC equipment trying to mm-hmm. communicate, get something to say something. Uh, yeah. I, I think in- instrumental transcommunication is going to be where the big breakthrough comes, but that's just my opinion. Um, right. Okay, go, go ahead. So you use ITC gear. What what sort of uh, – and instrumental transcommunication for those out there that may not know what that is, basically EVPs, and, and what else do you use in that in that area? Well, we use a uh, – well, we have the SP-7 and we have an SP-11 mm-hmm. uh, spirit boxes that scan the radio waves. Okay. And it scans at a, a high high speed, so it's it's believed, you know, if you get communication or responses to questions that are you know, almost in sentence form, that it's almost impossible unless it's paranormal be coming across those uh, radios. Oh, yep. Okay. Uh, once again, another piece of equipment I I looked at with uh, with was completely skeptical of until an event happened that a. Uh, Made me look at them. You know, you got to keep an open mind with some of these things. Um, mm-hmm. What sort of protocols do you set up during your investigations, uh, as far as to, to keep your your evidence field sterile, if you will? What What are your protocols for that? Well, of course, you know, during EVP sessions, I, I tell all the investigators to talk in a normal voice, never whisper. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to keep everyone out of the the home or the building during the uh, EVP sessions, except for the team conducting it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we ask them, you know, to focus on specific questions, try to identify an entity that might be in there, try to identify a time frame, mm-hmm. and, you know, and try to get intelligent responses. Time your questions so you give the entities plenty of time to respond between questions. Don't just pop off a a line of questions and expect the entity to say, okay, for number one, I did this. For number two, I did this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just, just for the for the folks out there, why do you tell folks, I mean, you're supposed to be quiet during an EVP session. Why would you tell them to talk in a normal voice? Uh, that way, if when I'm reviewing it, you know, if I hear a whisper, I know that I need to pay attention to that whisper, and it's not one of my investigators. Okay, got it. Very good. Um how long do you do your EVP sessions, electronic voice phenomenon uh, sessions with a recorder? How how long do you do each session? Uh, well, I've been limiting them, limiting them to about 15 to 20 minutes per session. Uh, mm-hmm. But sometimes when there's a lot of activity, the sessions will go a lot longer, almost 30 minutes. Ooh, but, that's, that's uh, tough like, for I, viewing. Yes. But I try to keep them down to 15 minutes. I tell them to do 15-minute interval sessions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, 
What any other piece of equipment that you use that you find particularly successful in your investigations? Uh, we use a DVR system. We have uh, uh, two DVRs. Mm -hmm. We run. We have an eight camera system, and we have another four camera system. Okay. And uh, we use that. Uh, two of our cameras have audio, so we're actually recording audio on two cameras constantly too. That's running in whichever particular room that we put them in. Okay. Okay. Um, tell me about. Tell me about your uh, your best investigation. Your your scariest investigation. Um, okay, the scariest one. Well, the one that concerned me the most was here a few years ago. We did an investigation of private residence, and uh, it turned out the evidence I was getting that I turned over to Destiny was, it seemed to be more demonic, non-human mm -hmm. type entity. Okay. And uh, that always worries me when I take a team in. I, I, I'm always concerned about the safety of my people. Okay. So, uh, well, what happened? What 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 occurred that made you believe that the entity you were dealing with was de de uh, demonic? Uh, one thing was uh, we were doing a, a session that night, and I was actually running uh, the SP7 spirit mm -hmm. box during that session, and I was listening to it, and Destiny would say something, and then I got over the spirit box and we actually you know recorded i always record a session two with a mm -hmm. digital recorder mm -hmm. and we got she would say you know I i'm gonna find out who you are and i got a voice that came over the spirit box says i'll tell my father oh ah, okay um did anything any follow-up to that one at all i mean did, was anything else said uh some uh, very uh bad language started coming across the spirit box. Okay. Have you ever, have you or any of your team ever actually seen a full-bodied apparition? Uh, yeah, I've had, well, I had a team member here a couple of years ago. It actually came, he says he came face-to-face -face with a uh, shadow person mm -hmm. during an investigation we were doing. And uh, it, it scared the pants off of him at the time because he was mm -hmm. still fairly new. And uh, that was probably one of his first paranormal experiences, and he ended up being you know, a darn good investigator after that. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody ever been hurt on any of your investigations? Uh, I've had an uh, investigator scratched uh, during investigations. I had an investigator slapped across the face. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, um, uh, any, any kind of... Uh, uh, any kind of time things like when things like that happen that creates a whole lot of issues uh with what you're going to do with the person how they react but we're going to talk about that in just a second because we're about ready to take our next break folks uh stay with us this is uh paranormal stakeout with my guest site michael fox we'll be back right after these messages They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 
Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S I M U L T V dot com, Sonny Boy. S I M U L T V dot com. S I M U L T V dot com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S I M U L T V dot com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S I M U L T V dot com. And uh, welcome back, folks, for our last round with Michael Fox of Fox Family Paranormal Society. Michael, this this, uh, hour has gone really, really quick, and I've only gotten through half the questions I wanted to ask you. Um, I do (laughs) want to remind everybody to check Mike's uh, team out on Facebook at Fox Family Paranormal, FFPS. I'd also like to invite everybody to check out the terrific programming on the X-Zone Broadcast uh, Network. Just go to www.xcbn.net and check out all the great programming on the site. Also, I'd like to invite you to uh, check out my website at either www.paranormalfbi.com or www.paranormalstakeout.com. Dot com. Uh, love to hear from you folks. Any questions, thoughts, or ideas that you might have out there. So reach out and say hello to me. Um, Michael, in our last few minutes together, a uh, little interesting conversations there about uh, stuff that has happened to your team and the evidence you've collected. Uh, one of the things that I'm really spearheading, trying to spearhead a uh, – I don't want to say uprising, but I'm trying to get people awake to it, is evidence. What we're doing with it, uh, how we're collecting it, and what are we doing to use it to find out what these answers are? Is it truly the other side? Is it us? What sort of protocols do you use? You collect the evidence in this particular case. You've got a a great EVP of something saying, "Um, I'll tell my father, I believe you said. Yeah. What What do you do with the evidence once you collect it? Well, I, I'll eventually, after I've uh, clipped it, you know, and shortened it to where you just hear the EVP, I will uh, copy it off onto a, a disc or something so we have it. And then a lot of times I will cooperate with other teams across the country that we've gotten to know, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll share stuff like that. And sometimes we'll get stuff that uh, we think is really cool, and uh, we'll send it to somebody else that, you know, that I might respect really respect their opinion and they'll listen to it and say well i ran it this way and i ran it this way and i can't explain it you know you got something Mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on creating a a bank that would be accessible to different investigators across the country even the world to compare with what they've gotten what are your thoughts that would be awesome i think that would be a uh you know, fantastic uh, thing to happen and probably, you know, help bring a lot more unity between teams across the world. Uh, I agree. And, and I am far from a genius. So I, I know for a fact, I'm not the first one to come up with that idea. So why haven't we done that? Why as a field, have we not done that yet? Well, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, what I've noticed over the years, you know, some some groups, there's a lot of jealousy among uh, some paranormal teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well, why? I, I think, well, why, you know, why is that the jealousy? Them. Why is there jealousy well, out there? Some teams seem to be doing better than others. You know, I, I really, I don't, I'm not concerned about, you know, being on television or anything. I'm more concerned about helping, you know, people mm-hmm. that call me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's no big deal. We've been called many times, you know, from TV producers. And we've never gone through with it because uh, that's just not my interest. Mm-hmm. My interest okay. is working the field and doing the paranormal and getting this research and collecting it, and listening to it, and talking to other paranormal investigators about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I've I've had I've talked to. <laughs> I don't even count, I don't even know how many folks in our field over the last couple of years on this very show, and two of one they've all agreed with what you and I've just talked about, but we're still not any farther. And everybody yeah. talks about the egos. Everybody talks about people wanting to be on TV, whatever. But we haven't moved forward. We haven't even really moved forward in the equipment that we used. 
So what do you think, Michael Fox? What do you think it's going to take to move forward? I think it's going to take, uh, you know, some uh, effort from everybody to, to start communicating with each other and maybe getting a, uh, a uh, national group started, mm-hmm. you know, even, you know, to the point if we have to, you know, run an election and let paranormal investigators vote who they want on this, this panel. Okay. Uh, that, that would be interesting. If it goes like the uh, elections in some of our parts of the country, that ought to really, really be <laughs> interesting. Um, well, hopefully it'd be better than that. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully. Uh, there, there's got to be a common goal, and, and I hope uh, in, in our discussion tonight and those of you that are listening out there, we start coming together. Uh, and I've been talking for a while, and uh, we're, I'm working right now to put – put this structure together. I mean, I'm looking for standards and training in our field as well as the ability for people to share information and, and, and come together as one. So that's, that's my big vision and, and whether, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll realize it in our, in our lifetime. Um, what's your future? What, what, what's in the future for you? Uh, well, I, I, I think my future is, uh, I would just like to, uh, keep networking with the teams that I work with across the country and the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're in contact with teams in Canada and we're in contact with teams in uh, Australia Mm -hmm. and England. And uh, actually we, we've shared a lot of, you know, common knowledge back and forth and stuff. And I think, you know, that's a step forward in what we were just talking about. I, I think it is. And I think that we, we need to come up with a way so that we, for example, uh, while well, you could use different wording and you could uh, say things different ways that best suits your personality and way to interview, but everybody should be doing having the same protocol to do an EVP session. Everybody right. should have a, a similar structure. And I use this uh, description a lot, probably ad nauseum, is you know if there's a homicide down here in Vero Beach, Florida that we're investigating, they're going to essentially there's going to be some changes in the laws, maybe some changes in in technique, but essentially the way you investigate a homicide in Vero Beach will be the same way you would in Eugene, Oregon, or or yeah. uh, up there in in Georgia. And I think that's where we've got to get to. But you know we got to. And I'm I'm guilty. I'm guilty of this too. We got to quit talking, and we actually have to do it. So that's kind of yeah. where um, where I'd like to see things go. If you had your your druthers, if you had to, if you could pick one thing that you would change in in how we do business today as a field, what would it be? And I know you've talked about togetherness and, and sharing, but more of a more of a tactical or a technical way. What what do you think we need to to change the most? Uh, I think uh, what we need to change the most is some of the attitudes across the uh, country and world with some of these teams that are doing paranormal. I think, you know, if we can get everybody on the same page, that Mm -hmm. would be, you know, the ideal thing. And I agree. I mean, there's and I think there's places for everyone. And I talk a lot about the mom and pop organizations out there. And there's a lot of small groups out there that do it on the weekends just for the fun of it. And Hey, you know, that's okay. But if we're going to progress further, we've got to, uh, I'll probably raise some eyebrows with this concept, but we got it. We have to become more professional and we have to take a more scientific approach. And we also have to start, stop being so single minded about saying it, it ghosts are this. The truth of the matter is we don't, we don't know yet what it is. No, we don't. And we've got to go where the evidence takes us. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, where do you see the future of Fox Family going? Uh, do you see your kids uh, keeping this? Are you going to retire anytime soon? Or are the kids going to take over for you? Well, I would hope they would someday. But uh, right now, I'm still going to go full force because I- I'm just so into helping people. I get more satisfaction when I have a client tell me, you know, thank God you you came and helped us. Well, and, and, you know, helping, that's, that's why I've spent my life as a cop doing the same thing because helping folks, yeah. and I just want to, want to make sure we're going to do that. Now, what do you do for a living? What's your grown-up job, as I like to say? Uh, well, my grown-up job right now is I'm working in Atlanta. I work for a, a, a company that deals in products. I work in their warehouse. Mm-hmm. But 
uh, before that, I was a uh, corrections officer for almost 15 years in Missouri. Ah, you remember the family. Okay. All right. Yes. I did not realize it. Okay. Yeah, yeah I have State... a degree in criminal justice. Okay. Where'd you get that from? Uh, University of uh, Missouri. Very good. Very, very, very good. Um, yeah. So, and, and Missouri is, is loaded with, with many places. Have you ever... What's the best place as we begin to wrap up? We've talked about a whole lot tonight, and this is a great way uh-huh. to, to end it. The best place you've ever investigated, the most active spot uh, you've ever investigated. That's an easy one, I can tell you. That was uh, Old South Pitts, Pittsburgh Hospital in Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Uh, okay. I'm familiar with it. I have not been there yet. Tell me why. That hospital is the most active building I've ever been in. Uh, we did a two-night sleepover investigation a couple of years ago there, and mm-hmm. we saw and heard and experienced so much. We even got uh, footage. One of our cameras during the night was picked up and then dropped and then picked up again. Oh, okay. Did you guys get that recorded? Yes. Oh, outstanding, outstanding. Now, were you there as just your team, or were you there in conjunction with a, with a, an event? No, we were there just as our team. Oh, that makes it that makes it even better. And you, uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, we had the whole run of the hospital, all three floors. My understanding now is that it has been temporarily closed uh, for renovation, because I, you know, I've heard many people down in our neck of the woods. That's not that far of a run for us. Well, here in Georgia, so it's even shorter for you. But yeah, I've heard a lot yeah. about that place. And uh, the, you consider that more – any other famous places you've investigated besides South Pittsfield? Uh, let's see. I did uh, – years ago, I did uh, uh, the, the Velisca Axe Murder House in Velisca, Iowa. Okay. Which uh, – I was a little disappointed in that place, but yeah, – I get, I get I a little disappointed. Yeah, I get a little disappointed in a lot of places that open up for, for events at times. But, hey, Michael, we are out of time, my friend. Uh, I really appreciate you spending time with us. Folks, thanks for being with us tonight on Paranormal Stakeout. We'll see you next week for the next edition. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you on the other side. Good night, all. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. 
Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.